Grab your coffee, ignore your cell phone, make sure the kids are entertained for a little while, because we're going to build a hang printer, and it's going to take a minute. The hang printer is a cable-driven rip-wrap 3D printer. It works just like a delta would, only it's controlled by cables, or in this case, fishing lines. If you want to see an overview of the hang printer, you can check out my video here. There will also be links in the description below about the hang printer project. This is what the hang printer looks like completely assembled. We're going to do this build in two videos in four steps. The steps being the physical build, the firmware, the calibration, and the first print. This is the first video. We'll get it built and get some firmware on it. Here are all the printed parts you'll need. You'll need four of what I'm calling hubs. This is what the fishing line gets wrapped around. You'll need three of these gears for A, B, and C, and then one of these gears for D. It's a lower profile. I recommend printing all these gears out of PET. These gears snap on these hubs, and with these printed in PLA and these in PET, you get a really tight fit. You'll need a D worm gear, an A, B, and C gear, four spacers, the main plate, I recommend printing that out of ABS since the motors can get kind of hot. The extruder, idler, and hot end mount parts. There's three of those. And these four pieces are for mounting the printer. You don't absolutely have to print these, but it makes calibration a lot easier because you'll have a guide to go on. Here's all the hardware you'll need to build the printer. For the extruder, you'll need two M330mm and one M335mm screw and three 623 bearings. For the printer build, you'll need eight 40 millimeter M3 screws, eight 12 millimeter M3 screws, two 6 millimeter M3 screws, 28 millimeter M3 screws, and the nuts to go with them. You need five NEMA 17 stepper motors. You could use smaller motors for the A, B, and C axis, but the motors can't exceed 38 millimeters in depth, or they won't fit the mounts. You'll need an E3D type extruder. I went with a Volcano clone because it was cheap and it'll print fast. You'll need an MK8 extruder gear, four 608 skate bearings, about 10 wooden screw hooks, some miscellaneous wood screws, and last but not least, about 10 fishing rod rings. These are what the fishing rod rings look like. These are 2mm rings, so the grommet that's usually here wouldn't fit an M3 screw, so I melted the grommet out and attached it directly. These rings are extremely hard to find, but if you can get 2.7mm that would be best, but I think 3mm would work as well. The eyelet end is what guides the fishing line so it doesn't break. For electronics you'll need some type of ramps board with 5 motor drivers, an AT2560 Mega Adreno board for the ramps to go onto, a 12 volt power supply to power everything, the miscellaneous wire to get power to the printer, and a not necessary but highly recommended Bluetooth adapter. This is a JY-MCU. If you're going with the Bluetooth adapter, you're also going to need a 680 ohm resistor and a 1K resistor to get the voltage down to 3.3 volts. The miscellaneous stuff you'll need is definitely fishing line. This is 30 pound test braided fishing line. Don't get the kind that'll stretch. You'll also need some grease for the worm gear. I went with white lithium grease, but any heavy kind of grease will do. Also consider getting some DuPont connectors and a set of crimpers. The shorter you can get all your wires, the better. First attach the nine fishing rod ring eyelets to the frame. You'll need three for the D axis and two for each of the other axis. The eyelet goes on the outside of the post. For the A, B, and C axis, I'm using 8mm M3 screws. For the D axis, I'm using 12mm screws. Here's the frame with all the rod rings installed, on top of each tower, and one in each D position. Install your A, B, and C motors on the frame with your M3 8mm screws. Those motors are installed. Now load your worm gear with three hex nuts and three M3 8mm screws. Now load your D-axis motor and mount it with one M3 by 8mm screw here. On the opposite corner, 
remove the motor screw here. Now you can load your worm gear and swing the motor into place. Now finish it up with an M3 by 40 millimeter screw going through the back and an M3 by 12 millimeter screw going through the front. Push the worm gear all the way away from the, from the motor and then tighten up these screws on the gear. Now we'll build and install the extruder. First put the extruder mount on the motor. Use two M3 six millimeter screws on the bottom and two M3 M8 millimeter screws on the top. These will go through the chassis. Now we'll install the filament idler. This is how I got mine to work. I used an M3 30 millimeter screw, added a 623 bearing, four M3 nuts, a 623 bearing, two washers, a 623 bearing, and then an M3 nut. This proved to be the configuration that worked for me. Load your idler cartridge in the printed part from the bottom up. Attach the idler onto the motor. Slide on your MK8 extruder gear so it will line up with the idler bearing. Now attach your idler tensioning arm with an M335 millimeter screw. I'm using a nylon line nut on the back for extra support. Remove the top right motor screw and mount the extruder motor with two M3 8 millimeter screws in front and one M3 40 millimeter screw going through the back. Now we'll wrap the fishing lines. On the D hub, you'll have three separate lines. I start with three meters for each line for a total of nine meters. Tie all three of your lines to the two holes in the hub and wrap each one individually while trying to keep them separate. All lines will be wrapped clockwise. I recommend using binder clips to keep track of the end of the lines. Do your best to keep all three lines separated from each other. You don't want them crossing. If you need more line later, you can add it to the mounted end of the line. The A, B, and C lines are much easier. I recommend starting with around 9 meters of line and pulling the spool to the center of that line. That way you can wrap both lines at the same time. Do try to keep them separate from each other, but this goes much faster than the D axis. Again, you can add more line to the end of the line if you need to later. All three A, B, and C spools will be the same. Always wrap them clockwise. Now put a 608 skate bearing in the middle of your spool hub and mount the D gear on top of the spool. Make sure you use the D gear. It is different than the other three gears. Make sure none of the lines get pinched when you snap the gear on the hub. Now slide the gear on the chassis. Make sure it's snug all the way to the bottom. Now add a spacer. Snap your C hub and gear together with the bearing and slide it on the chassis. Repeat for the, for the B then A gears. A, B, and C gears are all the same. Don't forget to put your spacers in between and one on top. Now run your D lines through the fishing rod rings and then up through the chassis. I like to wrap the loose end around an M3 12 millimeter screw. All the D lines will look something like this. Just leave a little slack out for now. Now run your A, B, and C lines through the fishing rod rings. The A goes on the tallest, the B goes on the second set, and the C goes on the shortest. Just tie off the ends of the lines for now and tension them up as tight as they'll go. Now add the A, B, and C gears to the motor shafts. Again, the A is the tallest, the B is the next, and the C is the shortest. They just press onto the motor shafts. Note the location of where the gears are going to go. The A will go here, the B will go here, and the C will go here. Here it is with the gears installed. Adding the stepper motor helps to keep the lines tension. Now we'll mount the mega board onto the 3D printed holder with some M3 8mm screws. And then we'll put the ramps board on top of that. If your motor drivers aren't already installed, 
make sure the adjustment potentiometer is toward the LCD plug or away from the USB plug. These are 16 times micro-stepping, so all of your jumpers will be on. Make sure you also put the heat sink on your stepper driver. Now you remove these six motor screws and replace them with M3 40 millimeter screws. This will attach the board mount onto the back of these motors. Now it's time to wire it up. Hopefully you got a wire set with your motors. These wires are way too long for the hang printer and they'll most likely cause problems. So I'm going to shorten these and put new DuPont connectors on the ends. We'll take the wires from this and make them look like this. The A motor will go to the X connection. The B motor will go to the Y connection. The C motor goes to one of the Z connections. Extruder motor goes to the E0 slot. And the D motor goes to the E1 slot. Add in a few zip ties to keep the wires out of the way. Now we'll attach the hot end. The hot end should just snap in from the side. You will need roughly 15 millimeters of PTFE tube sticking out of the top of the hot end. You'll also need roughly 65 millimeters of PTFE tube to go through the top. It's a real pain to get in there, but it's worth it when you're trying to load filament. I also shortened the heater wires and the thermistor wires. The heater goes to D10, and the thermistor goes to T0. The hot end cooling fan will be twisted on the DC power supply wires. It will be always on. We'll use the 5 amp terminals to power the printer. Remember the outside lead is negative and the inside one is positive. Go ahead and connect up your DC power to your power supply, but don't plug the power supply in quite yet. Find something to set your hang printer on so we can do a couple test movements. You don't want to bend your hot end. Cable your ramps board to a PC via USB. Now navigate to the hang printer GitHub page. Download the hang printer master zip. Extract the hang printer master zip. Go to the firmware folder, the Marlin folder, Marlin again, and open the Marlin Arduino file. We're not going to make any edits at this time. We'll do that during the configuration. Just upload it to the Arduino board. Tools, make sure it says Mega, select the port that you're on and then hit upload. Once it's done uploading, open up Pronterface. Select the correct port. The fault speed is 115200 and hit connect. You're now connected to the hang printer. For the first test, set the hot end to on to see if the temperature goes up and it's starting to increase. Set that to off for now. Now we'll use some G6 commands to make sure the motors are traveling in the right direction. Enter G6A1. This should move the A gear one millimeter clockwise. Now enter G6B1. This should move the next gear one millimeter clockwise. Now enter G6C1. This should move the next gear. And they should all be going clockwise. And then finally D1. If the motors are moving in the wrong direction, it's easier just to flip the motor cable than it is to adjust it in the firmware. The D motor was moving in the wrong direction, so we'll flip the E1 wire over. Now we'll test again. G6 D1, the motor is now moving in the clockwise direction. Last but not least for the build video, make sure you add some grease to the worm gear. This will help the D up and down movements greatly. So there it is. 
In the next video, we'll get it hung up and calibrated, and we'll go through a first print. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I have. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below, and thanks for watching.